everyone, you've got Nisha from Daily Cloud, and today we're going to talk about 3D printed plastic guns and what we've been seeing about that in the news over the last week or so. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the name Cody Wilson, he runs a company called Defense Distributed. Now, Defense Distributed distributes uh, blueprints for 3D printed guns that you can purchase, download, and then reprint at home, assuming you have a 3D printer, which gives Americans access to build guns in their own homes quite easily. Some of these blueprints, by the way, it's good to note, um, they're not just hand guns or sort of smaller weapons like that. They include weapons like AR-15 that have been used in some of the mass shootings that have been happening um, in America. So Cody Wilson has been trying to publish these blueprints online for years. Um, in 2015, though, the State Department actually made him um, take down the, his prints, not let him publish anymore, and they shut down the site for a while um, on the grounds that it violated export laws. But Cody Wilson uh, sued the government, saying that it was a violation of his First Amendment right to share information, which is interesting because normally when we talk about guns and the gun law debate, we're usually thinking about the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Um, but he cites his First Amendment right to share the information because, again, he's not sharing, he's not, his company doesn't sell the guns themselves, they just send, sell the designs for them. So, why are we talking about Cody Wilson now, when what I've been talking about was in 2015? Well, Cody Wilson had released um, a statement saying that he was going to post new blueprints um, online on August, last Wednesday, <laughs> August 1st, that's what I thought. Um, and uh, the day before, on that Tuesday before, he, um, a federal judge filed an injunction that blocked Cody Wilson from being able to post these um, blueprint. So Cody Wilson's team is, um, again, using the First Amendment right to try to get this um, injunction removed, basically. Um, the judge realizes, the judge who um, enacted this injunction, he realizes, of course, that this comes with a lot of the First Amendment issues that Cody Wilson's team had won with in 2015. Um, so they have set a date, August 10th, to further discuss these issues. So essentially, Cody Wilson isn't allowed to print his blue, uh, uh, post his blueprints until August 10th. Um, and then whatever happens August 10th will inform how he can move on from there. And again, the, the judge, he filed the injunction on the grounds that publishing these blueprints um, constitutes an imminent threat to public safety. Um, so a little bit about um, the blueprints themselves. So according to the 1988 Undetectable Firearms Act, it is actually illegal to print guns that are completely plastic because then they're completely undetectable and untraceable and all of these things. Um, so the way, and of course that also means that blueprints for these guns cannot be entirely made of plastic. So there's a clever little thing that uh, Defense Distributed has done where they make the plastic, I mean the metal piece of the gun that's essential to its firing actually removable. So when you go through things like airport security or school security, you can actually remove that tiny little piece and then um, your weapons can go straight through security without anybody being able to track it. So even though they've added this little piece to comply with the Firearms Act, it doesn't really help anything. The intention of the Firearms Act has not been fulfilled. Um, so because of the dangers of publishing these blueprints, eight states and Washington are suing the Trump administration trying to get them to do something, to take action um, against having these blueprints released, uh, which again will be discussed on August 10th. So uh, among some of these efforts, um, Mr. Blumenthal and Mr. Markey were among a group of Democrats who announced um, that they were going to introduce uh, two separate bills related to 3D guns, um, one that would ban the manufacture uh, and sale of untraceable weapons, um, and another that would prohibit the online publication of blueprints for plastic guns, which, of course, both of those things would directly affect um, Cody Wilson's business. So, of course, we have 
an issue here about public safety and therefore there are many Americans who have been voicing their opinions on uh, 3D printed guns. Some people think there are few enough blueprints circulating right now that banning the blueprints um, would help prevent the problem from blowing into full swing. Um, other people believe that the Pandora's box has already been opened because there are already some blueprints circulating in the U.S. and that banning them wouldn't really do that much. So they suggest instead a different solution, um, which would be to um, invest money into research for developing new technologies that would um, detect plastic in addition to metals in airports and schools. Lawrence Keene, um, who deals with government affairs for the National Shooting Sports Foundation, says that, um, end quote, as an industry, we certainly don't advocate that hobbyists try to do this in their basement, any more than General Motors would encourage somebody to go out and build a car at home. Now, as a spokesperson for the National Shooting Sports Foundation, he is a leader in the gun laws debate. Um, and his position that building a car and building a gun are remotely close to being the same thing and something that they can that can compare with each other, um, I think can be interpreted as a little bit flawed um, in that guns constitute a, right, as the judge said, a public uh, risk to public safety, whereas cars don't really fall in that same public safety category. Um, Lawrence Keene went on to say that he doesn't see this issue um, as significant from a law enforcement perspective or from a public safety perspective. Again, going back to citing his um, analogy to General Motors making cars. Um, it's also a lot easier to print a gun than it is to print an entire car. Just saying. So, here's the thing. There's so many Americans, including gun enthusiasts, um, are, who are against the free, unregulated distribution of weapons and firearms. So you can check out, we wrote an article about this a few months ago, um, you can check out this article on things that Americans actually do agree on, because there's a lot of things about gun control that Americans agree on, and some of those facts may surprise you. For example, um, according to a poll done by the Giffords Law Center, um, and they deal with the uh, gun prevention me measures, 96% um, of Americans think that you shouldn't be able to purchase a gun without a background check. Now, 3D printed guns, the part of their purpose is that they circumvent background checks um, because you can print them at home yourself. You don't have to go to a gun shop go through a background check in order to register for your firearm. Um, think about that, 96% of Americans, that kind of consensus is pretty much unheard of when it comes to issues, especially this divisive. So something that gun advocates have suggested um, that we've found is um, rather than, as Defense Distributed has done, um, make the metal pieces removable, um, to design in the blueprint a way in which that once the gun is already assembled, um, it is near impossible to remove the pin and still have the gun function once it's gone past through security or something like that. Um, and that would um, work towards greater public safety. Um, that is, that is the, one of the proposed solutions from the gun advocate side of the debate. So there are other risks that printing 3D weapons or having access to blueprints for 3D weapons add to um, the gun control issue, and that is stockpiling weapons. Um, we've seen that with a lot of, for example, our mass shooters that we have tragically seen uh, growing rampant across America. Um, a lot of them have been stockpiling their weapons, and that can be a huge red flag um, that can be caught earlier um, if there's some sort of registry or ability to trace the firearm. Um, but 3D printed plastic weapons, um, again, if you're printing them at home, you have access to unlimited materials provided you have the funds to cover it, um, and that certainly makes it easier to stockpile weapons at home. Um, than it has been before. Also, I'd just like to note that uh, this discussion on stockpiling and 3D printed weapons and uh, semi-automatic weapons is not to uh, 
say we should have guns or we shouldn't have guns or really discuss that aspect of the debate. Um, the purpose of pointing out um, that 3D printed guns makes it really easy to stockpile weapons is that um, historically stockpiles of weapons have been um, consistent across or con a consistent data point across many of the um, dangerous and violent mass shooters that we've seen across the U.S. and had law enforcement um, or the government had um, access to statistics that pointed to who was stockpiling weapons, perhaps that could have been used as a red flag, as many people have argued, um, to prevent shootings like this. And of course, this is not to say that those who have collections of guns are by any means <laughs> mass shooters or display those kinds of characteristics, but um, it can be used to monitor um, public safety. So we will get back to you. Um, August 10th is the day of the hearing where they will discuss um, whether the injunction stands and whether a defense distributed site um, remains closed or what happens with that. So we will provide you with an update on that issue um, come August 10th. And um, stay tuned, there's tons of really um, interesting arguments um, on either side of the gun control debate. Um, we, I will go ahead and link that article that I was talking about before, about things that Americans on both sides of the debate can agree on. Um, and if for those of you who are unfamiliar, in fact, how about I do this? For those of you who are unfamiliar with what an AR-15 looks like, um, I will put that, an image of that gun um, as the, the little cover photo um, on the Daily Clout website when I post this to uh, our site. So if you want to see what that looks like, go ahead and click um, the link below and I'll link the post so you can check out um, what that really looks like. So something I want to clarify about AR-15 um, guns is a lot of people think that they're assault rifle, but AR doesn't actually stand for assault rifle. It stands for Armalite, um, which is uh, the company that produced the gun to begin with. Um, so the question, people kind of go back and forth and whether uh, they qualify AR-15s as actual assault rifles. Um, basically, it's a semi-automatic gun. So if you, I mean, for every shot that you fire, you have to pull the trigger, but they're still designed to be able to shoot really, really fast. So they're, uh, for example, that's the model of gun that was used during the Parkland shooting. Um, so it's, uh, essentially it's designed to be able to fire a lot of rounds um, in a very short amount of time um, and can target a large number of people if that's what the gun owner is using it for. So on one hand, um, gun advocates say that um, an AR-15 or semi-automatic weapons uh, shouldn't be considered um, assault weapons um, because again they're not fully automatic um, and they're also used for things like hunting and recreational or whatever target shooting and that kind of thing. Um, but gun control advocates say that the distinction, again, between um, it being, it being semi-automatic versus being automatic is arbitrary, um, specifically for the reasons I just gave, um, because they can still fire um, pretty quickly. Um, and they can kill a large number of people in a crowd, as we've seen in some of uh, the shootings that have already happened in America. Uh, the mass shootings, I mean. So these are just some of the ways that 3D printed guns complicate the issue of gun control. And um, some of the things that have been making them relevant um, in the media these days. So um, again, stay tuned, like, subscribe. I've always got really cool videos that are being posted to the site to YouTube so definitely subscribe um, check out our website and I will be back with you very soon okay have a good one bye guys